many brands and manufacturers trying to identify product directives, regulations, even safety standards specifically for pet products, often come to the conclusion that there's nothing. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's, there's a free-for-all in the sense that there are no compliance requirements whatsoever uh, when it comes to pet toys. Well, my understanding is actually that so far, at least, there is no pet toy safety directive. There is no pet toy or pet accessory specific safety standard. That is at least my understanding, unless that is something that's been coming up very recently. In any case, there are still regulations and directives in the European Union that are not exclusively applicable to pet products, but are that do apply broadly to consumer products. And as far as I know, there's no exemption uh, for pet products. So we can then assume that these are requirements, these are regulations that you have to take into consideration. And that's really what I want to cover in this video. So part one, well, the first topic I would like to discuss is that of REACH, the REACH regulation. So the REACH regulation sets substance restrictions for essentially all consumer products in the European Union. In practice, what REACH states is that if a product, sorry, if a material or a product, an article, that's the term they use, contain a certain substance above a set limit, then it can't be sold in the EU if it's on, I think, Annex 17. If it's an, an SVHC, then you can still sell it, but it needs to be registered, okay? Substances that are regulated under REACH cover lead, cadmium, uh, various phthalates, I think, A-set-O, bisphenol A maybe, in any case, it's a very long list of substances, okay? And the specific tests needed depend on the material. Is it a fabric? Is it an alloy? Is it a plastic part, coating, etc.? But in any case, there's no exemption specifically for pet products. So given that it is a consumer product, we can assume that the REACH regulation, that the REACH regulation also covers pet products. At least that's the assumption we do and also the testing companies that we have been working with. Other than that, there's also something called the General Product Safety Directive or the GPSD. Indeed, it doesn't really, ha it doesn't, it's not specific to pet products in any sense, but it sort of states that consumer products in the EU have to meet basic safety, safety criteria. Okay. And Again, this is very much speculation on my side, but what if it turns out that you're selling, a, I don't know, a, a biting toy for, for dogs or cats, and it, it turns out that for some reason it just kills them, like by the hundreds, by the thousands. Could that trigger a recall? I'm speculating, but I imagine it could. I mean, I'd be surprised if it didn't. Then there's also labeling requirements. Again, a dog bed is a consumer product, right? Uh, these cat scratching trees and so on, still a consumer product. So you still have to consider the GPSC labeling requirements, for example. When it comes to standards, it's a little bit more complex. As I mentioned, at least I am not aware of any harmonized or non-harmonized EN standards that apply specifically to, uh, to pet accessories or to pet toys for human children there well for human toys if i can use that term there are there's e 71 and this is toy safety directive and that's also what we've seen we have found that some brands some european brands they actually voluntarily implement E in 71, despite the fact that's again for human toys, for human children, they still reference this and they still use these parts uh, for the testing procedure. And I would assume also as, as part of the design stages, they're likely implementing E in 71-1 in terms of mechanical and physical properties. So that's one way you can go about this. But in any case, um, when it comes to pet products, and I should also mention that nothing in this video has anything to do with pet food, for example. That's not our area of expertise in, in, in any sense. So I can't comment. There's got to be something, I assume. But 
that's not what I'm talking about in this video. But when it comes to, to pet products, you can still, well, you should follow reach, meaning that reach testing is de facto necessary. And GPSD should, at least in, in practice, also apply to pet products, given that these are um, accessories. Oh, sorry, that these are also consumer products in, in that sense. Something that you may also want to look into is flammability standards that would perhaps be relevant for something like a dog bed, just to give you an idea. Now I'm really far out. I'm really just speculating now. I don't even have any research indicating that would apply. I have no idea, but maybe it does because you may have foam and so on. Maybe it would be considered a furniture piece or bedding piece or something like that. So that's another thing you might, you might want to take into consideration to look into flammability standards. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, this video was a little bit uh, a lot of speculation from from my side. Uh, there's not that much solid to go on. I don't think the EU even issued a guidance document, or maybe they did recently. It would actually, be yeah. If, well, if anyone in any of working in with product compliance in any official capacity watching this, it would be fantastic if you would at least issue some sort of guidelines or guidance document, given that. This is a gigantic industry and yeah, people really care about their pets these days. So uh, yeah, there's that. In any case, if you have any questions about the topic, uh, compliance requirements for pets, and if you want us to share more of our knowledge, you can write a comment on the website. You just scroll down below the article. You can do the same on YouTube, just in the comment section below the video. And you can, of course, subscribe if you are if you want more product compliance related videos. Thank you.